Hi, everyone, and welcome once again to the virtual event space of Books and Books, your locally owned and independent bookstore here in South Florida for the last 40 years. Um, this is actually our 40th birthday year, if you have not heard yet. So as always, thank you for your support um, online, in-store, virtually. Um, your presence keeps us going. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I am Christina Russell. Um, I am one of the book buyers and event coordinators for Books and Books. And I'm really excited to be here to launch Join the Club, Maggie Diaz, um, an amazing new middle grade novel by Nina Moreno, illustrated by Courtney Lovett. Um, we have been lucky enough to work with Nina since her debut YA on um, events and creator campaigns and all that stuff. Um, and it's always a pleasure and a privilege to get to do it again. But of course, this time is exciting because it's um, a new genre. It's got a wonderful illustrator attached that we get to meet. Um, so I'm really excited to get to hear them talk about it. I'm so happy the book is in our stores. Um, and yeah, it's super fun. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to read their formal bios, and then I'll tell you a little bit about the your screen, and, and then I'll bring them on. So. Um, Nina Moreno was born and raised in Miami until a hurricane sent her family towards the pines of Georgia, where she picked up an accent. She's a proud University of Florida Gator who once had her dream job of shelving books at the library. Inspired by the folklore stories passed down to her from her Cuban and Colombian family, she now writes about Latinas chasing their dreams, falling in love, and navigating life in the hyphen. Her first novel, Don't Date Rosa Santos, was a junior library guild selection Indie Next Pick for Teen Readers, and Siba Okra Pick. Her sophomore novel, Our Way Back to Always, came out this past fall, 2021. And Courtney Lovett received her BFA in Visual Arts and Animation from the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. She works in different mediums and artistic disciplines, including illustration, character design, and animation. As a Black American and a native of the DC, Maryland, Virginia area, her work reflects her heritage and upbringing which adds to today's cultural shift of creating diverse and relatable stories from perspectives that are often underrepresented or misrepresented in art and media. So about your screen, um, the first thing I wanna point out to you is this big green button um, in the center below us. This is gonna take you to buy a copy of Join the Club, Maggie Diaz. Um, you can order it online. We ship internationally, internationally, but we also have copies in all of our stores. Um, and you can order online for store pickup as well. Um, and then the second thing about your screen is the Q&A button. It's that button. It should be um, bottom right for you guys. It says, ask a question. I invite you to use it. We are going to answer some questions before we wrap things up tonight. Um, so big congratulations to Nina and Courtney. And um, that's it for me. I'm going to pull them on. Just give me one second. Hi. Hello. OK. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, Courtney, we finally get to do this. I'm so excited. OK, let's talk about Maggie. Um, so I, I guess I'll start because it started on my end. Um, mm -hmm. So I, like you know, did not plan on writing middle grade because like Christina mentioned, I write YA. But uh, the amazing Shelly Romero over when she was at Scholastic invited the idea, brought the idea to me, invited me and said, hey, I think you could write middle grade. So do you wanna see, do you wanna try something out? So I jumped in, I jumped in and Maggie, as you know, is very loud. And so when I started writing her, she was very, very loud. And so <laughs> I, love middle grade. I found that I love middle grade. And so when Shelly also presented the idea, she told me that she had the idea for it to be like to have illustrations. And I've never written with an illustrator. I've never written a book with illustration. So yeah. I, as soon as I saw your sketches, I knew magic. Magic was going to happen. So I'm really curious how you came into Maggie Diaz's world. Right. Well, let me just say this. Um, you were my very second project I have ever done in publishing. So I'm still relatively new, but I'm so excited about it. Um, honestly, 
I have always wanted to do something like this because I have, um, I used to read, a, um, what's it called? A Diary of Wimpy Kid by Jeff Kinney. And I always love those books. I have them all the time. And I was really inspired by that kind of like illustrative, like within a novel type of storytelling. Mm -hmm. So when this opportunity came my way, I was like, ooh, this is a great opportunity to try that. And then it was solidified when I read your writing. <laughs> Nina, your writing is so funny, hilarious relatable like i feel like like maggie is me like i <laughs> definitely related to maggie in so many different ways the middle school years good <laughs> so all the stuff that was happening then um but not just that also like the family dynamic mm -hmm. in it i even related to that um i come from a relatively big family as well so it was so um it was such a good opportunity for me to not only work with Scholastic, which, you know, I grew up with. If you went to school, you know, all the book fairs and things like that. So I was like, okay, Scholastic. And then again, when I read your writing, I was like, I'm so, so yeah, that's how I became involved. I thought, it, I, and I think it's such a cool opportunity for, to have like a specific, cause you know, Maggie, she's in Miami. She's Cuban American. She has Cuban American mm -hmm. parents. Like, and the the specificness of that experience, it, like that's kind of where the seed of the idea popped off. Because mm -hmm. Shelly is also from South Florida. I grew up in South Florida, so we used to like throw each other like funny gifts of like Pitbull and da da this, and we're three o five till I die. We'd make all these jokes online, and then we sort of bonded over the mutual South Florida kid experience of mm -hmm. having a relative an older relative, an older responsible rel relative, tell you to go snatch that piece of fruit. You know, go grab that avocado. Go grab that Go grab that lemon off that tree. Because, and it's like, <laughs> oh my God, like the anxiety of having to go dash off and like snatch an avocado off someone's tree. Mm -hmm. I always thought my mom was going to drive off. Like, <laughs> I was sure that she was going to leave me. Like, but like, I love the idea of this, like really like what seems like it's, specific experience and getting mm -hmm. to still like frame it in this really like seventh grade is awkward middle school is yeah. awkward like regardless of where you live regardless of you know your background your family you know if you live with grandma or not it's awkward so I love also like how how universal that experience feels especially like with your art you gave everybody like so much personality like uh -huh. Like I, I would just like I, I would write the illustration idea of okay, maybe Maggie could be doing this, and then you'd be like, bam! Like, you added so much. Like I'm so I'm curious. Like, what went into creating Maggie? Like, how did you come up with how she would look? Yeah, no, that's good. Um, actually, I want to like before I answer that, harken back to something you mentioned earlier, which was you mentioned that um, it's a very universal story, but it's talking about like a specific demographic. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, being black, I I jumped at the idea to basically um, illustrate for an experience that's different from mine, mm -hmm. um, the Cuban American experience. That's I first of all, I always want to like amplify diverse voices. That's kind of like what I want to do. But it's just the idea that, you know, having a, even a more general story that everybody can relate to, but having like a Cuban American girl at the center, beautiful. So, so for me, it was that. Also just coming with the fact of like, um, in terms of her inspiration or just like kind of how it came up with the yeah, design. Yeah, because like, it's so like, look at this. <laughs> Like she has so much person. Like just, I remember like having. Okay, we got to introduce Maggie on page one. Okay, cool. So right. I thought of like talk. You know the little these little things. But you gave mm -hmm. her so. Look at that face. <laughs> I love her. You, you like you even drew the pimple. You drew the pimple. Like, <laughs> I love. Like I don't know. And how? No. She, <laughs> you showed. No, I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, well, I guess a lot of that comes from just me wanting to basically, like I said before, like draw different types of people. And because I come from an animation background and I do a lot of character designs, um, I do focus on like really expressive and 
designs that have like a lot of personality. So for me, honestly, in terms of coming up with like the designs themselves, that was actually quite simple for right. me. Um, just because it's something that I do all the time. And for Maggie, she just jumped up to me, jumped off to me as like such a energetic, like mess. Such yes. an energetic mess. Chaotic <laughs> tween. A chaotic <laughs> mess that's just trying to do the best she can. I mean, she like the whole family dynamic of like having, you know, older sister or older siblings in general, and then you're parents, you know, this is pressure and things like that, which happens a lot in different families. Um, but even just like, just her experience in middle school, I was thinking about like, you know, the, I wore a uniform, of course, because I went to a private school, but it's like, you know, even going down to little uniforms and how we even style them differently. Mm -hmm. One thing I like to do with the characters, because they are in uniforms, her and her classmates for a good, you know, chunk of the book. And I wanted to kind of bring out their personality even within their uniforms. So it's, I don't know, it's just really thinking about reading what you wrote, thinking about who they are, and then creating the characters based on that. Um, that's just like my job. And I love it so much. So good. <laughs> Did you have a favorite, like a favorite character design? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Her older sister is my favorite character design. I love her. <laughs> I, oh my goodness. I, uh, <laughs> Carolina Caro, like she is my absolute, yes. Yes, love her design. Like yes. the way you got like <laughs> the hoops, the butt, like the, I, I feel like everybody who's already read the book and seen the book, everybody wants to be, everybody wants to be Maggie's older sister. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to be. And that's so stylish. And that's exactly it. Everybody <laughs> wants to be their older sister, even when they, ah, you're too perfect. So. Exactly. It. It's like, you love your sister. You want to be her. But at the same time, you're so irritated with her because she's just there making you look bad. <laughs> <laughs> Not intentionally sometimes, yeah. but it's just. <laughs> Oh, it's just so funny. So her, um, and also uh, there's this boy, well, you know, of course, but I'm telling people, like there's a goth kid named Eddie. I had so much fun with his design because one of my favorite things to do is like, just to do like interesting hairstyles. So he has like a, like a he, type of hairstyle. He got that emo hair. You got that emo hair, right? You got that emo <laughs> hair. Oh my gosh. And I love, I mean, you took care with everybody, but it was like, I don't know, like when you're writing prose or whatever, like you never get to see, you, ha you have the images in your head, right? You have the picture in your head. Yeah. But so the chance to see things, I think, I think it elevated my writing. It made me like want to write toward the picture. Like I wanted to make sure that I was doing like, like if I'm going to write a cute emo boy, like that's this cute. I better do it justice because I mean, oh, he's he so is... cute. I love him. I love him so much. And the thing is, like, even reading, I'm not going to give too much away, but just reading him, I was like, kind of shocked because you do kind of have this sort of preconceived notion about, you know, how quote unquote emo kids are. Right. And he's, he's a surprising, like, sweetheart at times. He's still, you know, like, kind of quiet yeah. to himself and things like that. But I was genuinely shocked by some of the actions that he did. I even, I even wrote a note while I was working on it. I was like, oh, Eddie is so adorable <laughs> <laughs> to share it with you guys. Because I was like, I'm so in love with this character. Um, I, love, so yeah. I, love, I love how he melted everybody. Because I feel like everybody gets, get. there's always an Eddie note. Oh, Eddie. Mm -hmm. Oh, Eddie. Yeah. Oh. And that can be many different things. Oh, Eddie. Or like, <laughs> oh, Eddie. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. Even um, Maggie's friends. Maggie's friends were also a lot of fun, too, because, um, you know, they all have their, their different things that they're good at. And to be honest, I was also thinking about, like, well, I think about this all the time, where I grew up, you know, knowing a lot of different people. All of, I can definitely speak that all of my designs are inspired by somebody I was around or grew mm. up with. I won't get into specifics because, you know, but <laughs> yeah, like they, they kind of are an amalgamation of like people I know usually. Um, yeah. So I, I really did like the opportunity to explore the different character designs. I think that's what makes the, the collaboration so interesting too, because it's like, I put a lot of people that I know into things, you know, and so like, the baby brother I named after my nephew. 
uh, mm -hmm. Maggie, I feel like everybody, I feel like a lot of creative people who've had a lot of anxiety and like pressure, per, you know, pressure to be perfect. A lot of us relate to Maggie. So mm -hmm. a lot went in there. So I don't know. I find it, I, I love the idea of like, here's an idea. I'm, and then you just take it and like, add all these other layers to it and it's still the uh, this thing we can both relate to like i i don't know mm -hmm. i love the way that pro this project especially has like i don't know yeah mary is maggie people. the one you relate to the most oh uh, your character it's <laughs> yes but also i relate <laughs> a lot a lot to her mom you know really? I'm just, like, in that, like, oh. yeah like yeah like trying to, mm -hmm. i love her mom for the idea of through through Maggie's mom, through her grandmother, she gets to see all these different stages of life and how mm -hmm. even though her grandmother's older than her and has all these stinky medicines and vitamins are everywhere and <laughs> you know everything smells like old people to her, her her grandmother and mom are also going through similar things. Like her grandmother, her abuelo died, you know, recently. Mm -hmm. So her grandmother is also wanting independence as much as Maggie is. And her mm -hmm. mom is also trying to figure out what she wants. She's a college student at her age with kids mm -hmm. and dealing with a million things that, you know. So I like the idea that though Maggie may not see how relatable everybody is. Like, mm -hmm. I hope as a reader, you can kind of like zoom out and be like, wow, this is a really, you know, all of them are going through similar things at different points of their life. So hopefully the message gets across that we get to continue reinventing ourselves over and over and yeah. over again, right? But right. And isn't that interesting though? Like, I, th I think that's also something good to take away from the book as well is that, you know, within family, especially within family, but even like in any relationships, you never know how similar your issues are to somebody else or what you're going through, your journey is to somebody else. And I think it's so easy for us to sit from a place of judgment because we always look at it from like our own experience, mm -hmm. like, oh, they're doing this to me or they're not being this or you perceive like for example like uh, her sister right yes she's like this this and that but that doesn't mean her sister doesn't have her own issues as well right, right. so it's it's so interesting to um see that it's like putting yourself in somebody else's shoes like the empathy that um we need to feel within our family is so important and i think we do there there's also a bit of that in this book which i do, really do appreciate like there comes a point where, you know, Maggie does recognize herself and other people. And that's beautiful. Um, I love that. I do. I love that. Like, I, this is a really special book we made, you know, like, <laughs> look at them. Um, no, but I, I have been starting, I have started to get the question if, if I did a lot of clubs. And I didn't. Mm -hmm. Did you do a lot of clubs in school? Um... I, I mean, I did sports. Did you? Like, I did play basketball. Um, but that's really it. I mean, I did do, like, small clubs here and there, but it wasn't, like, they weren't really substantial. They didn't really last that long. Right. Um, the only thing that I did, uh, it wasn't really a club, or it wasn't seen as a club in the school, but there was Honor Society, which I was mm -hmm. a part of. So that and basketball were my big two things. I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Not really. No. <laughs> it's funny because um, in high school, rather in middle school and high school, because I went to the same school for both. Um, it was interesting because <laughs> um, I feel like I was kind of in an unofficial club or just like a club of one with me because <laughs> like, well, only because like, um, I'm, of course, I'm an artist, and it was very known that I was an artist throughout mm. the school. Like, if anything, like the whole popularity thing, if I was popular for anything, it was because I'm an, I was an artist. So you were drawing um, even then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been drawing since I was four. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is something that's been ingrained in me for <laughs> a very long time. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I... Uh, I, I was always kind of selected to help around with like the bulletin mm -hmm. boards and decorating and like doing spirit week was a whew, <laughs> school like because we always had like we had to decorate a wall and things like that. So in some ways, even though I wasn't necessarily or there wasn't even an art club in school, I felt like I kind of was my own art club <laughs> because I did spend a significant amount of time helping teachers, helping staff, helping other students with art stuff. 
So, yeah. So you're a little bit of a future leader, like Maggie tried to be for a hot Yeah, second, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's yeah. go with that. <laughs> Yeah, I did it. I did it. I was that kid who like raced home to like read and write fan fiction about mm. boy bands. And I wanted the like, because I feel like in middle school, like being in a club, it feels so like that's my answer. Like th those yeah. are my friends. Like that's, if I'm in band, I'm going to hang out in the band room. If I'm, you know, like I know my place. So I feel like the clubs just give kids such a sense of, self mm -hmm. and, and an identity and, an identity when there's mm -hmm. like searching for one so desperately because that was Especially like a middle school i know <laughs> and like and that was one of the things like in writing this like you know i'm writing i i was writing ya i was writing about senior year senior year feels like it's a big deal like what am i going to do for college am i going to go to college am i going to do this it's this moment of turning into an adult and I wanted to make sure that I gave middle school the same weight you know the fact yeah. that because we can be really dismissive of that time in our kids lives they'll come to us and yeah. be like I'm stressed and we'll be like well what do you have to be stressed about you don't have a job right you know, it's really easy to do that because we were, we were like that too I mean if you think about it like when we were younger everything you know that actually happens in every stage of your life like I guarantee like me when what I'm facing right now if mm -hmm. I were to like fast forward my my future self would tell me like now like girl calm down it's gonna be okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you can say that literally about every stage of life it's like every point you come across it gets more intense the stakes are higher and it's almost like it feels like the end of the world every right time. so for them in middle school it does feel like the end of right the world. they haven't faced anything greater but the last thing they want to hear is us telling them oh, no it's not, right. it's not a big deal it's not a big deal it is a big deal you know it's a big deal so it i is think for them giving it that sort of i don't know the angst of that moment like i i wanted to do that mm -hmm. but also like the i hope it's funny i think it's funny i laugh at maggie like oh I it think, is funny yeah <laughs> i was laughing even without the illustration like i was laughing when i was reading the script and one thing i will say is well because of course maggie is the funniest because we're in her head but it's almost like one thing I do think, and I want to applaud you for, because this is really difficult to do, because there's, there's this like prevailing attitude when it comes to middle schoolers. Like they're so this, they're so that, they're so bright, they're, they're whatever it is. And I think that you did a really good job with balancing with Maggie is making her, um, number one, understandable. You don't always have to be likable, but at least understood. So you got that. But she is also very likable because <laughs> you you made her you you gave her a lot of moments even though she's going through this like essentially like identity crisis just a normal middle school thing you still made her very you know have these moments of kindness and these moments of real care even towards the people who sh maybe she's not necessarily on good terms with right now yeah so I think that's that's really really good and effective to do. Um, so Maggie is such an interesting protagonist. That's why I relate to her so much. Cause it's like, we're not all one thing. It's not all angst, but it's not all joy either. It's a, right. Um, right. Both. That's yeah. Cause yeah. Cause there is a moment, there is a, there's a shaky moment between her and her friends that I feel like I remember mm -hmm. that like I, when I went through that, like yeah. an almost friendship breakup, like my world was over, like it ended. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah. you know, and balancing, I think, the friendships with the family, because I think that was important, too. I want to see family on the page. You know what I mean? Because I, yeah. I feel like a lot of books that I read growing up, um, it's like the parents disappeared as soon as the kids went on an adventure. That's you know so what I mean? true. Yeah. There were no, the dynamics of home didn't re weren't really always at play. It was like they were the background mm -hmm. while the friendships were always, fr you know, front and center. But mm -hmm. it's a balance of both. Like, I feel like that was a big thing. For me in middle school was okay this is home nina this is school nina this is friend nina this is daughter nina and so mm -hmm. taking on different identities right yeah so mm -hmm. that comes into play i think in a big way in middle school of figuring out how do i fit not just at school but how do i fit at home you know so right and that's a good thing too because especially for kids who are very close to my family like i'm very close to my family i love my family so much mm -hmm. and the, the amount of support that they give me is un unmeasurable um and love that they show me and the thing is like even when i was going through those times they were there and that's 
that's really important to showcase that is the times that they're there as your family. I mean, yes, your friends too, but also your family. I know for a fact, I wouldn't have been as okay with things if it wasn't for my family being right. there to help guide me through all these questions that I had growing up middle school and high school. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I'm curious, was there mm -hmm. an illustration that you got that you were like, oh my God, how am I gonna do this? Yes, <laughs> quite a few actually. Um, I'm trying to remember what was the most complicated one. Um, I feel like it was, I think it was the map that I did. The map? Of, the map of Miami or like her hometown. It's okay. a small illustration, but just the fact that um, I was just, I'm so, I'm such a like a perfectionist and a <laughs> person. I always want to like do the most. And I honestly like, Courtney. Stop. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, the, the map was a bit difficult for me because I was, actually it kind of is the, uh, like a good encapsulation of my entire struggle and struggle is relative. I had a good time doing this book, but there were some challenges along the way. Sure. And one of the biggest challenges was balancing between being detailed and being simple, like yeah. finding that balance when, it, especially when it came to like background illustrations and things like that, like how detailed should I get? I know at one point there's a mural in the book and I was wondering like, how am I going to translate that into this simple style? Um, so that was, that was very challenging. It's just more like the, the process of, and honestly, this happens in like illustration and character design in general. It's the process of simplifying reality and bringing it down to a point where, um, you know, it's, it's appealing to look at, but also having, noticing like little details and just like certain things in it. Conversely, there are times where I want to go all in on a detail. Like for example, <laughs> Two things I love the most during this entire process that was doing their hair. Every single character's hair is quite detailed. And when I was doing like trying to figure out the shading style of it, um, I went with like a more flat style. And mm -hmm. I was like, this is a Latin community. I really <laughs> want to showcase their hair because their hair is gorgeous. I mean, like, it's so many it's so beautiful so I was like no I can't I can't do that I gotta do the, the service because like I love drawing hair I mean even you know I draw like a lot of people that look like me so I love drawing mm -hmm. black hair so the opportunity to draw like you know uh Latin, like of course their hair of course so I really love that and also the second thing was food Food drawing, oh my like food, anything that had to do with the culture. I really wanted to put the detail in, and I think that was like that was one of the things I was so excited to see because you, you and I have talked about this the fact that we both love Studio Ghibli, and I love the oh, way yeah. they, they showcase food Gorgeous. in those movies. And I like was you like, you can smell it through the screen. Like, how cool would it be to see these like. Cuban American snacks, these Miami snacks, and see it given the same sort of love and attention. And it was like, oh, you did that. You did that. Mm. Like that plate. I loved it. Oh my gosh. And I was like, <laughs> I, I, all the desserts, the pastelitos, like all, all of those things. I was like, oh, I cannot wait to do this. <laughs> so every time food pops up, I'm so excited to do it. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. Speaking of, Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. The cheese pull and everything. <laughs> no, there's just so, and I, <clears throat> I know we were talking about Caro because I, I do, I do love Caro's like whole style or whatever, but you like went off on the art teacher. Listen, honestly, I forgot to mention her. She is also one of my favorite character designs. Miss Perez, Perez is like, her. The, Nina, you gave her I'm asking you now. Can you please put her more in <laughs> future books, please? I love her so much. I love her. Next one, join the art club, Maggie Diaz. Right, join the art club. <laughs> like one of my favorite. I think that was one of the like things that I really had to pull back on in edits. Was like there were too many clubs. Like it was like. I know the whole point of the story is joining all these clubs, but it's also like, Nina, she can't join, like, 
There was like supposed four to be, or five. I think I think there ends up being four. Four. But like okay. initially, there were other like there was going to be a movie club. Like oh wow, the cinephiles where they like watched movies and like mm-hmm. Maggie had this whole like dealing with watching black and white movies and hating it and like her abuela loving it and her like tr- mm-hmm. like you know so the drama of. Already she had her abuela in her room. The last thing she needed was to be also, you know, you're smelling old people stuff. You got old people stuff <laughs> everywhere. And then Maggie's like, I can't be watching old people movies. Like, Maggie, oh. you know Maggie. She was just very, yeah. very angsty. She but is. She just wants to be independent. That's all. And, it's a little independent. And it was so interesting to write a story like that for me, like, because I started writing this in February 2020. So, like, Right out. Oh wow! Yeah. Right, like right before everything shut down. So that's that's what I was working on during like wow. lockdown. That's what I was working on while you know my kids switched to virtual learning and we had laptops mm-hmm. and computers everywhere. And so I felt like I was as desperate as Maggie to get out of the house and you know hang out and go places with my friends and stuff like that. So it was mm-hmm. it was an interesting moment to sort of write about wanting independence and Mm -hmm. but also like just i don't know they seem like small goals like maggie's goal i want to be able to ride my bike past school all the way to the park and i want to get a phone and so it seems like okay that's not a big deal but i feel like for Mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of us who maybe have stricter parents or have immigrant parents or whatever like that like it is a big deal to like I don't know, like have your parents give you permission to go to a slumber party and like Mm -hmm. trust the world beyond their own nest, you know? Yeah, no, that's super important. And just also just plays into, like we said before, just ways in which to establish their identity Mm -hmm. and separation or just their identity beyond kind of like where they come from. Um, Keeping in mind where they come from, but still like, you know, getting the phone, riding the bike outside of your home. And you know, uh, getting the good grades, and or just just things like that is it's all of that is plays into like who we are and what we want to do with our lives, um, whether we realize it or not. Yeah, I know for me, uh, some of the things that I used to do when I was a child, I didn't even think was really anything or some of the goals I had. But it turns out, I, the things that I thought about years ago are things that I'm thinking about now. And things that kind of circled back. These uh, seven be goals and thoughts, or just creative ideas, and something like that. The twelve-year-old version of us counts too. You know, like we should yeah. dismiss what they wanted, or dismiss you know what was important to them, because that shapes those goals and interests shaped us now. So mm-hmm. I do. think, yeah, giving that moment of our life the importance that it deserves I think is something that we both try to do in this one to be like Absolutely. yeah it's super funny and silly but also those things that you're worried about at 12 they're a big deal they're absolutely yeah, they deal, are. right like absolutely getting a fo- getting your own phone so you can listen to your music and not have to listen to your mom's stuff or not have to listen to your abuela's like loud music like that's mm-hmm. worth. That's a worthy goal because that's a first step of independence, and that's a huge, huge deal, you know. And I didn't get a phone until high school, so Maggie's already ahead of me. <laughs> I know. Listen, <laughs> listen. That's the thing. Like, I did not have a phone until my first year of college. Wow. Like, yeah. You know. So, like, and listen, I'm a little older, so I get it. So we're not going to talk about. We're not going to do the math right now. But, <laughs> like, so it was. I get it. Like now I have kids and they want this independence and they want to ride their bike and they want to do this. And so it's like, mm-hmm. maybe that's why I'm relating to her mom because I'm yeah. now I'm having to manage the fact that I had those sort of stricter. Cause you know, I had friends who were like running all over town and doing this and doing that. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to. So I told myself, well, I'm going to be so much cooler when I'm a parent and now I'm a parent right. and I'm like, I don't know. You know what? Do we really need to go to a slumber party? Do we really need to sleep somewhere else? No, you need to go to bed. Go to bed yeah. <laughs> where I know you, where you are. And, you know. Yeah. No, I feel you. It's interesting. You talk about relating. I feel like when I was reading it, I I feel like I related to like a combination of two characters. As much as I wanted to be like her older sister, uh, 
I feel like for real in reality, I'm right. I'm more like Zoe, okay. her friend Zoe. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of like, you know, she gets a good grade. She, uh, you know, she's very smart. She's very um, kind of very studious overachiever to a degree. Um, and she has a, a an artistic gift. Now, granted, hers is different than mine, but mm-hmm. you know, she has something going on. But at the same time. I feel like I'm Maggie when it comes to the mind. Like I am so eclectic and sometimes I feel scatterbrained <laughs> that <laughs> honestly her thoughts, I was like, yep, Maggie, yep, yep, that was me. Or that is me now. It's just, it's kind of funny and crazy. But um, yeah, I think those two I relate to the most. Um, just having to, you know, deal with, you know, sometimes the pressure of being, you know, a successful x or whatever it is right. or even just like the idea like you know trying to take care of everything by herself because that's something that maggie does too like she tries to handle everything by herself and it's like it, it, it becomes overwhelming so yeah um i relate to them both yeah because there is there's even now like there's so much pressure i think on us to perform success in a really mm-hmm. obvious way to be like you can't just have like a hobby athlete. Yeah, like you can't just have a hobby just because it's fun. You need to be able to turn it Monetize into something. It. You need to yeah. like so like even like the idea of the story where she's gonna try a bunch of clubs to figure out who she is. It's like the idea of why is the answer of becoming of of who you are? Why does it have to mean something that like oh, what were your grades? How did you succeed at this? How did you do this? instead of right. did you have fun? Did you learn something new? Yeah, did you something new. You know. Or even something as sim- not simple, but something even beyond that, like, oh, this is something you're interested in. Do you want to see yourself doing it for like for a career or something right. like that? Instead of just like, no, not really. I just right. like it and I want to try it. Or maybe I don't know if I like it and I'm just interested in it. Um, that's so true. There's not enough. You know what it is? There's not enough playing out there. It's work, 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 work. Or and see, just doing everything for the purpose of work and goals. It's not enough play out there. Right. I Oh, my God. I love that you say that. Because there is that moment that Maggie has when she's at gym. And uh, the PE teacher is like, you know, I think they're doing their mile run or whatever. And they're walking. And, she's, and they're like, this isn't recess. And so Maggie almost has this moment of, oh, it's okay to run around if you're playing a sport. But not if we're playing. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't get to play anymore. Yeah, And I think that, like, moment of, oh, I guess I'm not a kid anymore. I can't play. I think mm-hmm. I, I remember having that moment because I was a kid who played outside with my friends. Like, I had all these neighborhood friends. We'd ride our bikes and we'd do all this stuff. And then it felt like around seventh grade, everybody, like, became legitimate. Like, oh, I, mm-hmm. I do this sport now. I do this now. Yeah. I, you know, instead of – there was no fluidity to it anymore. We all had right. to have a specific answer, a specific role. We had to go to this meet, this practice. It wasn't just, let's go ride our bikes and see what happens. Right. And there's like a separation that happens too, because there's definitely a moment in the story where like the clicks start mm-hmm. to form. And like, you know, people, as they're gaining interest, there's also, um, you know, being around people who are also gaining those same interests and almost like limiting yourself to that group of people. When right. in actuality, playing also, it's not just means like what you're doing, but also who you're interacting with. Like one of the best advices advice as well Courtney really one of the best pieces of advice I received is um you know play more not only with what you do but the people around you right in a sense of like don't don't just flock to people who are like you um try to you know make connections with people who are completely different from you and see what you can learn from them. And I will tell you, one of the greatest like discoveries of, you know, if just speaking for my my art and my illustration, is I find that you would think just by looking at what I do that I am like when it comes to my inspirations, I am most inspired by, you know, illustrators and visual artists, painters and or animators and things like that. And I am, but I'm more inspired by performing artists, Ooh. interestingly. Um, and I learned that when I was in college, um, I talked to a lot of people, actually one of my best friends in college, well, first of all, he did everything, but he also had a very 
um, strong uh, talent in performing arts in many, like he did songwriting, he played some instruments. I'm sure he can do acting if you want to see, he's literally like an artist. Like if you think artists, you just, you'll find his name next to artists <laughs> in the dictionary. Um, but yeah, so I just learned so much from, you know, people who, yes, it is still an art form, so it's not completely outside of my, you know, right, my scope, but it's still a different type of art and a different type of way of thinking. And funny enough, you mentioned expressions and personalities. I got that from studying actors. I love actors wow. and I love yeah. looking at them and studying. I love watching movies and just consuming media of that type anyway. But um, I learn a lot by studying actors. It really helps. Oh, so yeah. I encourage anybody who's watching this, if you are somebody who you know, has an interest, still play and venture outside your interest, not only in what you do, but also who you interact with. Right. I, yeah, and I think that that's always like a big part of when writers say, oh, I have writer's block. I have, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I feel like I can't, you know, write right now. It's always, well, go fill your well, you know, go fill your cup with something yeah, else. Yeah, exactly. You know, look away from the document for a second and go listen to some mm -hmm. music, go walk outside, go, you know. And I think that's such important advice to continue to give kids, even as we're telling them, you know, figure out where you want to go to school next, figure out what sport you want to play, figure out this, you know, we're asking them to make so many decisions, but we should always, I think, be at least framing it in a way where they don't feel like that is the be all end all. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you it, now you're done. Like, yeah. no, you can try other things. Like, you know, like I, I hope that that's something that they get from reading this. That the, the absolutely that there's still time to figure out who you want to be over and over and over mm -hmm. again. Look at her mom. Right. Look at her abuela. You know, but there's also if you try something and you don't like it, okay, cool. Try something else. Mm -hmm. Like don't yeah. think, you know. Well, I joined band. Now I'm stuck playing this flute for the rest of my life. You know, like no. <laughs> venture, venture yeah. out, play, play now, play now, always play. Even adults, y'all play. Yes. <laughs> play more often um well honestly if this whole conversation didn't convince people to immediately purchase a book i don't know what would because this is amazing <laughs> i mean we've come up with great advice play i mean yeah play <laughs> hey. hey are you guys ready for some questions some audience questions yes, yes definitely yes okay great um, that was a really, really great conversation though. Um, so uh, the first one I was going to ask, I don't know if you can answer it or not, but it's here and it's very relevant. So I'm going to ask, is Maggie Diaz going to be a series? Hmm. Nina. <laughs> I think we will have confirmation of that very soon. And okay. yeah, that's all you're going to say on that. Okay. Yeah. Um, next question. <laughs> um, let's see. Can you both talk about your creative routines? Ooh, ooh, that's a good question. Go ahead, Nina, you go first. Um, I, I feel like I used to be a little bit more, I got to be a little more, I don't know, cute about my routine. Like I try, like, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna light a candle. I'm gonna make sure I have tea, you know, like almost like creating this aesthetic version of writing that I would inspire me to write because, you know, writing is really hard sometimes. But then you get deadlines and it's like, you know, you've got kids, you've got this, you've got work, you've got all these things. So I feel like my job now as a writer is, yeah, I got to meet these deadlines, but also finding all these tiny little ways to still feel creative and still feel inspired. Mm -hmm. So like we were just saying, you got to fill the well. So yeah, I, I make the playlist. I return to the playlist when I'm feeling burnt out. I move around a lot. Like I have a laptop and I, if I'm not right, feeling comfortable here, I move to a different spot. I try to get there. Cause sometimes it like people say, it's really hard to look at a blank page. It is really hard to look at a blank page. And it is really hard sometimes to fix things that feel unfixable. And then, you yeah. know, so just getting down to the, you know, like, I don't know the outline again. And I have a big poster board with like post-it cards and I, it helps me to like, okay, I'm going to do the acts in different colors. This first acts in green, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And I'm moving them around. And sometimes just seeing that helps me because 
it is really hard sometimes to navigate a 300, 300 page document and be like, I don't even know what this is anymore. It's algebra and I hate math. You know, like it just feels <laughs> so overwhelming. So I think just taking that step back, taking a breath and looking at the pieces of it helps me the most. Mm-hmm. What about you? Um, it's so interesting. Remember I said early in this conversation, I'm eclectic. So I feel like I don't really have a routine per se. I do know that I have certain practices that I do, like kind of similar to Nina when I'm reaching like a slump or say I have a deadline. I'm like, I have to work through and just push through to in order to meet that deadline. Um, One thing I do try to do is like have something around that kind of inspires me. It can be something on my wall, maybe a piece of art that I did, maybe something I really, really love. Sometimes it's looking at other people's art. And I got to be careful with that because sometimes I can also <laughs> do the opposite effect. But <laughs> um, looking at other people's art, sometimes it's just literally removing myself from the project altogether, just for, at least for an hour, and just mm-hmm. doing something completely different. Um, either completely different or just engaging in something that is maybe like an art or a different art form. Like for example, um, there was a time where I was going through a really hard time. I had a lot on my plate trying to meet deadlines. And just out of nowhere, I just started practicing on the piano downstairs uh, just to kind of like take my mind off of um, what I was doing, but still continue to exercise my creativity because the benefit of doing that was that's not my work. As much as I enjoy art as my, you know, it's my passion and everything and what I do in illustration, it's still also work for me. Mm-hmm. So getting away from that altogether and putting art or uh, rather um, just basically like utilizing art in a different form mm-hmm. helps me because there's no pressure there. It's like, oh, it's like straight creativity. Maybe I'll learn something. Maybe I'll look something up just to learn. Um, but for the most part, I try to figure out different techniques in order to get my mind working because it does take me a while to get into it. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> it's funny because like some people when they make up a schedule, they're like, "Oh, we got to plan by the hour." I can't do that. Yeah. I can't do that for me. Um, it has to be like either a listing or some other strategy because it sometimes takes me. 30 minutes just to to start, warm up mm-hmm. to warm up mm-hmm. and just start getting into it and then only have 30 minutes left mm-hmm. so it's like all that time is it's, it's not enough it's like the transitioning is too quick and it's and like i'm not really getting anything done and what i hate yeah. is when i warm up and then i'm like okay i'm in the swing of it i'm writing i'm writing i'm right i i look i just wrote a whole paragraph and then i go take a break to reward myself no it's gonna take me another 30 minutes to warm back up like yeah, time management. exactly. Not yes. great. Time management is that. Um, it's something that honestly I'm still learning because, like I said before, I'm new to this. So it's something I am definitely still trying to get the hang of. Um, one last thing I like to do um, is engage with other creatives. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I've been writing myself. I'm not really a writer yet, but I've definitely been doing it Mm -hmm. and one of the things i love to do is whether it be my writing or you know my illustration show it to other people and we just like bounce bounce off ideas and things like that because engagement for the creators really does fuel you i always 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 feel a hundred percent more engaged and creative when i engage with Mm -hmm. another creator Um, And it doesn't even have to be talking about what we're doing. It could just be regular conversation. Because I think there's something interesting about talking to another creative about life. Right. Ooh, yeah. They see things like in a different way, in a similar way. So even if we don't talk about what we do, just talk about kind of like just things that we Mm -hmm. are on our minds and things like that. I can always tell whenever I meet somebody and like have a conversation with them if they're like you. Yeah, you make stuff. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I love that. Me too. Okay. Um, Next question is going to be How does it feel to see your book in the scholastic book fairs at schools? Nina. 
you know that. I, I know. <laughs> I know. I actually, I've seen it on Instagram, you know. I, I got I've seen it. it on, yeah, I've seen it online, but not in person yet. I love the book fair edition, and I did, I did buy it off my daughter's flyer. Like, I was that excited. And it's wild because it is a place where, you know, we engage with books as kids. And so the idea of one of yours being there is like, I don't know, because that, that was the first place where it was like, it wasn't just the library for me to be able to like, I'm going to buy this. This is my book. And like, I didn't really get to buy books because my parents didn't have a lot of money. So it was like, I'm going to get a pencil and I'm going to look and smell at all these books. It's going to be great, you know? So to know that my book's there, and I've already seen like teachers that have been sending me stuff with their kids uh, reading it. And I had a you know, a young reader who was like, oh my God, I look like Maggie. And I was like, I'm going to die. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. It's that's so always the best. Oh my God. Uh. And, and then like, they're, they're engaging with it. And so to see like fifth graders picking it up and like, my fifth grader doesn't think I'm cool, but they might think I'm cool. Like, oh my God. Like, so <laughs> I think that that is because it's, it's, Book fairs are a place where the kids themselves are the ones making the decisions. You know what I mean? Because if I if I went to the bookstore with my parents, you, you hear all the time of them being like, no, you can't buy that book, buy this book or whatever. But the book fair, the book fair is yours. You know, that's your time. Yours. So I think yep. mm -hmm. that moment of having a kid pick your book, man, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. No, I feel that. And honestly, that's that's honestly where I get the most talking about energy from before. That's where I get the most drive is when I see kids actually either pick up the book or say they love it. I have a um I have a niece and nephews. I don't have any kids myself yet, but I do have a niece and nephews and just to see them their reaction when I tell them like, Oh yeah, I did this, they're like, What? <laughs> what? But also, it's kind of cool because it's like I like Nina said. I used to read these, and the fact that I mean, I used to dream like, oh, what would it be like to make or to draw one, of, like to have some of my drawings in this one book that I love. Like, what would that be like? I had, I'm talking <laughs> my baby books. That's how you talk. It's like, what would that be like? Um, and it's so, it's mind-boggling, honestly. It's surreal. It's like, wait, what? This is mine. Mm -hmm. Wait, this is mine? <laughs> what? what? And then when I finally start seeing them in the stores, it's going to be another like, and when I see somebody pick them up, pick it up, I'm going to be like, again, crazy. I, lo I love hearing stories of like authors at the airport or something and they see someone reading their book. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. That must be so like. <laughs> I like that hasn't happened to me yet, but I have had like I, when I was at Miami Book Fair once and somebody came and said Yellow for Rosa and I was like, oh, my God, like <laughs> for someone to recognize. <laughs> yeah, the recognition. But I don't know what I would do if I saw someone reading like I would cry. I've heard so many authors say they didn't say anything to them. I wouldn't. Oh, my God. I would never. I don't know <laughs> what I would say to them. Be like, I wrote Hi. that book. Hi. <laughs> I illustrated that book. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I feel like they'd be excited, but also, yeah, I understand it's Maybe. like most authors are like somewhat introverted. So. Yeah. If a kid came up to me or just like a kid picked it up and I happened to be beside them and they were looking at it, I'd be like, hey. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I, what Kids I come love to that, signed I books, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They do. Okay, so this one I guess is for you, Nina. It's um, how was the process different writing middle grade from YA? It was super different and similar. Um, I see Shelly's here and she's on Latino time. So it's all because of Shelly. It's all because of Shelly. She was the one who like picked up on something in my writer voice and um, said, I think you'd be really good at this. And I thought to myself, I don't know, you know, I'm really comfy over here in my YA angst and you know romantic drama like can I do middle grade but and it was also like really intimidating because it's like I knew I was going in that I wanted it to be a funny book it's going to be a funny book can I be funny and like can you be funny with a middle schooler like I don't know that the stakes on that are like super high so it's like I wanted to really like getting the voice right was just crucial to me um but I found in, I don't know, I think there is something interesting that I brought to writing middle grade for myself coming from YA, like making sure to give 
seventh grade the same, you know, sort of weight that it has when a kid is 18. Like, it's just as important when you're 12, you know, these decisions and these, you know, questions that you're going through. So I think for me, I found it really, I loved it. I loved it. 2020 was a really hard time to write, but I'm so glad that I had Maggie to write because it just, it felt like home and it felt like I got to explore all the things that I love already writing about. I love writing about family. I love writing about friends, you know, but getting to do it in the middle grade voice was like, oh, okay, this is my sense of humor. Like I, I just like fell right into Maggie. Like she was loud and I just, I, I heard her clearly. <laughs> so it was like, it was really, really fun for me to, I don't know, something about having, I'm glad that I had written YA already. I don't know if I would have found my voice in middle grade if I hadn't written, if I hadn't been writing YA already. <laughs> so anxious, so funny. Maggie is a chaotic, our chaotic little chocolate queen. Child, you know, like, so <laughs> I, I put a lot into making, making, trying to make her as individual as she is, but also as relatable. I think that a lot of us can ex remember what seventh grade and 12 felt like, you know? Mm -hmm. I just like lost a question that I was reading. Oh, okay. Here it is. Um, so Courtney, someone said, um, am I muted? No. Okay. Um, our family is a club all by itself. Do you feel that we were more of a support or more of an inspiration to your creativity? Oh, I guess it's my family member. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I know, but I knew I wanted to. <laughs> it might have been my dad. Um, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. In fact, let me just give you a quick rundown of like, because I told you I was drawing since I was four. Like, um, the reason why I started drawing in the first place is because my sister was drawing. Um, she was drawing basically like the, you know, the cartoons or even like the you know, the movies we watched as children. And me being a younger sister, because, you know, uh, I wanted to do everything that my siblings did. Like, even my brother, he, he played... Um, you play basketball. That's how I got my interest in basketball. Mm. Uh, so it's like, you know, a lot of my interest came from like trying to copy my older siblings. <laughs> um, so yeah, I started doing the same thing she did. We both became very interested. I feel like I even did it longer than she did. Um, however, when I was in second grade, I caught the attention of my art teacher and she actually had a program outside of school, a very small program at the time. Um, it's called More Than Conquerors Art Studios. Shut up. Um, they're very local in the area. And I was in that program for 10 years. So from second grade, because once you graduate from high school, you graduate from the program. Um, yeah. And not only that, when I uh, went to basically uh, interview with the director, um, she, I told her that I also have siblings that are artists as well. Like my brother also drew as well. He didn't really draw too much of what we did, but he was, he also liked to draw. So we all enrolled in the school. Um, I was in it for 10 years. They're, they're both older than me. So they're in a little bit less time than me. But at the end of the day, we would not be where we are without that program. And honestly, a lot of that is thanks to our parents who supported us throughout that entire thing. They paid for it. They, you know, kept us going to it. Even when we were like, oh, I'm not sure. We, they were like, no, no, you're going to go. You're going to go because this program is great. And if you want to be artists, you got to do it. You got to do it. So um, we were really, really blessed that not only did we, that, that we had, uh, you know, people teaching us outside of school or just like that, that program for us. But we also had very supportive parents that supported mm -hmm. us in our artistic journeys. I know many people who, you know, because art, there's this idea that art isn't sustainable for, as a mm -hmm. career. And it's like this whole idea of like, you know, you, you're going to be, you know, uh, it doesn't make any money, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. And at the time, you know, that's kind of understandable because at the time there wasn't as many opportunities. Now there's so many opportunities. And even now it's still kind of difficult because it's more competitive. But I was very blessed that even though that was there, they still never gave up on us. And they were like, if you want to do art, do it, but you better do it and do it and work hard and do it right. Mm -hmm. Because we're not going to let you be no starving artist. <laughs> <laughs> so I was really, really um, 
blessed that I had parents who, you know, supported all three of us every step of the way. Um, and I wouldn't really be where I am without them. They are amazing and continue to support me even now. I mean, clearly they're some of them. <laughs> so uh, I, I really do love them and I appreciate them so much. My family is so important. I love that. So the time has completely snuck up on me. I did not realize um, we're already <laughs> at an hour. Um, so <laughs> I guess I can, I can ask maybe one more question and then, and then we'll wrap it up. I, I think a good closing question might be, um, sorry for the noise. Uh, what can we expect from you next? Oh, okay. Um, I think, um, yeah, I, hopefully Maggie has more to say and, um, I also am still in my YA bubble. Like I'm still writing my, you know, I'm keeping all my angst over there, a little bit sprinkled over here in middle grade. But if you're into the romance and angst, find me in YA. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I, oh, I don't know what I can well, say. Can you talk about that? <laughs> yeah, hey, publishing I don't think I can secret, actually so. talk about anything yet, but I will say um, I do have quite a few projects coming out um, in the next two years, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I'll say, Two of them are picture books, um, and uh, one of them is like a, a chapter book series. So that's really all I can say. Though. <laughs> that's exciting, though. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I'm excited. All right. Well, thank you to both of you for joining us today, and congratulations on Maggie Diaz. I'm so excited to have the book um, and have it in stores. Um, and thank you for everyone who tuned in. We got a lot of questions. I'm sorry I didn't get to them all, um, but I had a really good time tonight. I hope you guys did too. Um, yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.